deepest thoughts to you and uh, would appreciate if you look into my book the, uh, that I uh, wrote, the code name God, uh, mostly because I thought this is too good to be thrown away. And when I presented it to my editor, he says, it's too dry. You have an interesting life story, which you have seen in the video. Why didn't you add it on uh, to get the, you know, give them a, a, get it over the hump? And that's why I wrote the book. So when you start reading it, you will see that I, I tried to interweave my uh, life with uh, uh, the, the, the scientific idea of oneness, eventually giving the background of what we know now to come to the conclusion that everything is coming from one source. So that has been a uh, uh, something that Abdul Kalam really liked it. He said he reads three books, uh, and that always one of them was God named God, and that made the book very popular in India. Uh, it was a bestseller in America also, and translated into quite a few, or at least a dozen languages. So anyway, anybody who wants to uh, dig deeper, you can look into that. And, uh, and now there's other people are coming with the similar kind of things also. I hope that I have not bothered you too much. I, it has been a great pleasure to talking to you. Thank you for listening to me. some questions. So um, we're talking first. I don't know. Can, can, you, can, you, can you stand up and uh, 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 state, uh, state your name, please? Sorry. Uh, my name is uh, Sandeep Paul. Sandeep Paul. Okay. Uh, sir, you told that all particles are placed on the same footing as or forces, major forces, electroweak and strong. Right. So can you lightly, uh, slightly elaborate the concept? I mean, particle, okay, how they can be similar as forces? Very deep and interesting question. Obviously, it's very puzzling. Uh, particles which seem to be so physical, I can touch this table. But when you look into it, that uh, they are being held together, of course, with the electromagnetic force. And uh, the uh, carbon or other particles that are holding it together, again, all also coming from the same quantum type, same type of field, the quantum field. So in today's, uh, you know, uh, I think, uh, as I said, the reality that we find today, we live in. Uh, can be described very well with this quantum field theory. According to that, the source that produces forces, force particles like photons, like gluons, or graviton, uh, or you know, the W and Z bosons, they come from exactly similar kind of objective reality which is the fundamental reality of, so far as you know at this time. They are equivalent in producing, uh, they are equivalent to the fields that produces the particles. And that's why we believe that the, when you find the unified field, it will contain not only the force fields, but also fields of particles. That's what I try to show that electrons, even though they feel, look like a uh, like a little marble ball, but in fact it is actually a wave, packet of wave. But 
a special packet in a sense that it is a holistic uh, particle that you cannot take like a water wave, a little part of it. You have to take the whole entire wave packet for measurement. That's why wave function collapse because you take all of nothing. That's why it acts as a particle. Yes. In electron, even though we call it matter, but it is actually a wave, a wave packet, a holistic wave packet, which contains all the properties of the electron, its mass, charge, its, uh, uh, all, all the momentum, and uh, uh, spin, magnetic momentum, all that. But it's still a wave until you only, only measure it, you take the whole thing, that's why it looks like, a, that's why it acts as a particle. So that's why in our modern scientific worldview, the force particle and wave part, uh, and matter particle is on equal footing. Okay? Thank you. <clears throat> Good question to start with. <clears throat> It's a, a little bit of a, uh, uh, what shall I say, <coughs> counterintuitive to us because we are used to forces, uh, you know, something abstract and uh, something can, uh, can see the matter we can touch and feel. How can it be same? But when you really go down to uh, the basic reality, objective reality, they find there they really come from equal footing. Anyway, we have some more. Okay. I have a question. Uh, so we've been here, uh, some of us here have been working on quantum computing and, uh, as well as quantum cryptography. So I was curious about your views of uh, the. We do have uh, experimental results and demonstrations of very small quantum computers, but um, what are your uh, views on this uh, for real life? applications where it does matter? Well, I think that is not just my view. And then most of the people who are working on this are working very vigorously. And in fact, uh, the US uh, Department of Defense, the DARPA, the Advanced Research Project, spending a huge amount of money uh, to develop uh, quantum computer and uh, of course, it did not replace digital computer because quantum computer, as you know, uh, you give a uh, uh, input, yes or no, and it will give a uh, output. Uh, but the calculations uh, can be much faster, like 10 over 20 times faster than the fastest computer we have. But there also has to be always complemented with uh, a digital computer that we have. But the uh, expectation is that uh, not too distant in the future, you should have a quantum computer, at least, you know, uh, uh, the, I believe the proof of uh, principle has been already demonstrated. And uh, to make a working, actually working quantum computer, uh, I would say probably in a decade or two, we'd have a, we'd have a uh, you know, all, all the necessary components, the logic gate and the uh, qubits, they're all pretty much in place. We have to put it together. So really making fast, it's a very fast moving uh, field. And quantum cryptography is actually now a very well established field and uh, actually in actual use. Now that uh, uh, the, the Chinese satellite, they're put in a uh, entangled, uh, uh, entangled system in, in the orbit. Um, the, uh, you know, Anton Zeilinger, who is one of the, um, uh, one of the person in the forefront, he says that we'll have a not only a quantum computer, a quantum internet someday that cannot be uh, compromised. Uh, you can compromise it, but it will self-destroy it, just like the quantum cryptography does now. So I think the future is really very bright and promising, and uh, uh, 
it's again just like we haven't got the final unification yet, yet everybody believes we are going to reach there. So it's a most of the, I, I'm not in that field, but all the people I know that are working on it, uh, that quantum, quantum, quantum computer uh, and, you know, <laughs> teleportation that has been this, this, uh, actually demonstrated for one single uh, particle, but uh, quantum teleportation would be another uh, reality, like Star Trek. Uh, uh, not not a human yet, but at least you can teleport uh, some quantum states and eventually uh, some tangible thing that you can do that. So I think you are in the right field. Uh, the only thing I may not be there when it <laughs> you know, when it is done done. So I'd like to be flying the wall thousand years from now. Because the way things are moving so fast, yeah, exponentially, uh, uh, it's hard hard to imagine what what we would uh, yeah, achieve. You know, we don't even think of thought about it. But suddenly, quantum computer and what probably quantum teleportation would be uh, something realizable, not to distant the future. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. I have one last question. This is the last one. My name is Devar Kushan Gupta and uh, I'm a computational genomist. Yeah. Computational genomist. Genomist. Okay. Yes. So I don't have the training to understand what you said, but I have a rather philosophical question because I know you are one of the very few who juggle with both theoretical physics as well as the philosophical aspects of um, this world. So my question is, you know, can we really know, I mean, do you really know that whether whether human mind is capable uh, biologically or in whatever aspect, physically, mentally, are we capable of solving something like a unified field theory? Uh, capable of what? Are we physically fit? <laughs> so, you know, uh, I, I, so, I sorry, sorry. so can you hear me now? Mm. Yes. Okay. So what I'm saying is, how do we guarantee that we are really capable of solving something like unified fifth theory, right? For example, there could be biological challenges. Maybe human mind is not capable enough for, you know, for solving something which we, which we would like to solve, right? So is there such a guarantee that, you know, this is a very funny question, I guess. But that kind of stumps me quite often. I kind of think that, is it possible that we are giving all this effort to understand the world better, to find something unified, but in the end of the day, it happens there is something bigger, you know, there is a bigger picture where we are so small, we are biologically or physically or by the dimensions that we can be quantified as human beings, it's not sufficient to solve those kind of things. The, the creation of our own selves, right? So we're trying to understand what created us. So I'm trying to understand that how to one, you know, how, how can you guarantee that you'll finally solve something like that, right? Something like the unified field theory. Yeah, well, yeah, of course you have touched upon something that would um, involve quite a few disciplines at first tackle the single one. We may look to be small, but indeed, when you look at the scale of the universe, from the smallest of the small to the largest of the small, uh, largest of the large, uh, I didn't get into that, how big the universe is, but uh, the universe that we see, what we call, is a visible, visible universe, meaning from where light has been able to come to us, which is about 13.8 uh, billion years. But it seems like the universe is bigger than that because when you look at the microwave background radiation, the space seems flat, not curved. Just like Earth, uh, you know, ordinarily we see Earth is flat. In fact, for a long time people thought Earth was flat. But when you look at the Larger scale from space, 
but it is perfectly round, oblate, little, uh, but uh, round. So that, uh, that's because we're looking at a small part. So that's when it looks flat. But we know that the universe is curved because it started from it. As big as the universe is, it started from a very tiny nugget of space, probably close to the Planck's dimension, which is 10 to the power minus 33 centimeter. The visible universe is 10 to the power minus 27 or 28 centimeter. And it probably could be million times, at least a million times bigger than that. So if you see our size, like a meter or two, just in the middle, we may, be, we may be small compared to the universe, but we are as large compared to Planck's dimension as the universe is big compared to us. So we are not small. The second thing is, how do you know that, yes? Yeah. Uh, how do you know that we'll find uh, in a bad field? Uh, uh, well, as I said, until the electroweak unification was uh, accomplished, uh, both theoretically first, and then experimentally and demonstrated. People had a hard time believing in that. But when two such diverse fields were shown to be exactly coming from so same source, that broke the barrier in people's mind. And then, of course, as I said, we have a pretty good theory of the grand unification of the three, uh, three forces. And uh, <coughs> So, I have not met any notable physicist yet who doesn't believe that we will not succeed in this uh, endeavor of finding uh, that all particles and forces come from the same, uh, same source. And uh, as you said, of course, there's no guarantee, but uh, as of now, we don't see any impediment. And uh, uh, I, I, I believe that not only will stop there, but I think, uh, you know, everything is in the quantum vacuum, and probably that's where our source of proto-consciousness is there also, and we probably will find that not only will find unified field, but we also have to unite that with our awareness. So I'm an optimist, and, you know, people who are pessimists, they will say, well, I don't believe it, okay? Well, until we prove it, we have to keep an open mind. But so far as you know, what we have seen, we can see a uh, definite train towards that. I hope I have answered your question. Yeah. So, thank you so much. Uh, uh, yes, you have some more questions? Yeah, that's cool. Uh, you have mentioned about the PBR theorem. Push the last yes. Yes. So, uh, and also the Colbert trainer uh, result about uh, uh, which one? Colbert trainer result, the psi complete theory. Colbert trainer. Colbert trainer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so uh, maybe this is uh, after the uh, result. Uh, there are lots of uh, criticized by uh, Girardi and uh, uh, um, Emerson uh, about the. Uh, assumption which has been taken in uh, both the cases in colbeck Jenner and uh, PBR theorem. I, uh, uh, for PBR theorem it is some kind of preparation and independence and for yes. colbeck Jenner it is free choice. So uh, I personally meet uh, Pushe, uh, the one of the writer of PBR. Uh -huh. uh, they have told that maybe it is uh, impossible to <coughs> demonstrate the objective, objective reality of wave function in quantum mechanics without any further assumption. So what is your opinion? And without further assumption? And assumption. Just like in previous theorem, it is preparation independence. Yeah. So our free choice in colbeck trainer result. So what is, uh, so say, Pushe have told, that, told me that maybe it is hard, or maybe it's going to be impossible to prove any objective reality of quantum theorem, <coughs> wave function in quantum mechanics without any further assumption. So uh, what is your opinion about that? Well, as I said, you know, uh, PBR, you see that in Rudolph, is looking at it from the quantum information theory point of view. And in fact, uh, you see that R R PBR, so to speak, is getting more traction in this uh, hot debate about psionic and psi-epistemic uh, debate. Psionic is where they 
believe that uh, wave function is a reality, and psi of is no. signal. <coughs> but I think that the psi ontic is gaining traction, especially because of the uh, because their uh, analysis pretty much shows that if you prepare the uh, quantum states of the system, and then when you do the uh, prediction of the system, if the uh, over function doesn't have a reality, then it's, the results are not consistent uh, with what quantum theory would say without the objective reality. And that's why it's getting, getting some traction. So as far as I know, uh, colbert Rayner also has a similar theory, of course, but uh, um, uh, PBR is becoming more acceptable in that sense. And this is why what I'm doing is supplementing that, because uh, I'm, although I'm not looking at the system's point of view, but at least for a single particle, I have shown that uh, on the basis of our objective knowledge of reality today, uh, based on quantum field theory, that uh, the wave function does have a reality. So I'm coming, com so it's complements what they're doing. So in that sense, uh, you know, again, I'm very much with Einstein uh, that uh, quantum, quantum physics as a reality, but again, Mind you, it's not classical reality, it's a quantum reality where you cannot predict at all what a single event would do. But if you have an ensemble, then you, it's, I mean, it's very true. In fact, if you have seen this diffraction experiment where they shoot through double slit, a single photon or single electron, when you shoot one of them, it's totally random. Even 10, even 100. This looks like a random pattern. But if you have 100,000, then it, you start to see the diffraction pattern. The quantum average, quantum mechanical average kicks in. So um, again, I believe that uh, with that caveat, there is reason to believe the uh, wave function has an uh, objective reality. Again, quantum reality, <coughs> not uh, uh, or classical reality. Have I answered your question? I hope. Or you, uh, you have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Yes. Thank you.